After just about a week on the moon's surface, the Odysseus lander is officially out of power as the long lunar night begins. In the last few days, we received even more images showcasing its position on the surface, broken landing legs, and tilt. This comes in addition to another press conference revealing what payloads were affected in the state of the lander. Though expectations that IM-1 would conclude within the next few days, Intuitive Machines continues to provide updates on the mission, including images. They recently mentioned that Odysseus landing strut fulfilled its primary function by absorbing the initial contact with the lunar surface, preserving the mission's integrity. Furthermore, the cryogenic methane and liquid oxygen fuel engine systems are still functioning properly. However, there was a surprising development when an updated image revealed that the lander had a broken leg. During a press briefing on February 28, Intuitive Machines CEO and co-founder Steve Altimiz provided insights into the IM-1 lunar mission, stating, This information was confirmed by an image shared on NASA's X page. Odysseus initially sat upright for approximately two seconds on terrain with a roughly 12 degrees slope. However, it began tipping over and eventually came to a rest at about a 30-degree angle from the horizontal. Additionally, it is slightly propped off the ground by one of its tanks or other pieces of equipment. Despite the less-than-ideal orientation of Odysseus following its landing, intuitive machines adapted to the situation by utilizing the spacecraft's low-gain antennas to transmit imagery and scientific data back to Earth. However, the landing orientation posed challenges, such as preventing the use of the high-gain antenna and casting shadows on the uppermost solar array. Furthermore, it was revealed that there was no altimetry data from a laser rangefinder, indicating that the lander descended just short of its intended landing site, adding up approximately 1.5 kilometers away in an area with higher terrain. According to Steve Altimiz, CEO and co-founder of Intuitive Machines, the lander came in with more downward and horizontal velocity than expected due to an overestimation of its altitude above the lunar surface. With stance in contrast to the previous image updates, which depicted a smooth landing process without any indication of a crash. Confirmation of the situation and further insights may be provided once Eagle Cam, an important payload, transmits new images. Altimus mentioned that Eagle Cam was deployed on February 28 and is currently positioned approximately 13 feet or 4 meters from Odysseus. However, there has been no imagery received from the instrument yet, as the Eagle Cam team is troubleshooting the issue. In terms of the general situation, the lander likely has only a few more days of operation left. The impending lunar nights pose a significant risk, potentially causing damage to the lander's electronics and batteries. Each lunar night lasts roughly two weeks due to the moon's approximately 27-day rotation period. So, time is limited for Odysseus to continue its operations. Beyond the problems with the lander, NASA still declared I am one a successful mission. In the press conference, both NASA and Intuitive Machines officials confirmed the reception of data from nearly all the payloads aboard the Novice Lander, aka Odysseus, which successfully touched down near Malpert A Crater in the south polar regions of the Moon six days earlier. Altimus expressed satisfaction with the mission's outcomes, stating, We had some very high-level mission objectives was to touch down softly on the surface of the Moon, softly and safely, and return scientific data to our customers the two primary objectives. And both of those objectives are met, so in our mind, this is an unqualified success. NASA reported receiving data from all five of its active payloads on the IM-1 mission with some operating during transit to the moon and others providing data after landing. A sixth payload, a laser retroreflector, will undergo testing in the coming months. Joel Kearns, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration and NASA's Science Mission Directorate, characterized the soft touchdown on the moon as a significant achievement, referring to the mission as a pathfinder or a flight test. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson echoed this sentiment affirming, Odysseus is a success from NASA's point of view. Despite facing numerous challenges, intuitive machines remains open to the possibility of reviving Odysseus, affectionately dubbed OD after the two-week lunar night. While it's possible that Odysseus survives the lunar night, Teams and intuitive machines didn't specifically design the lander to do so, which means the mission has likely come to an end. Here I'll go more in depth into the new images, the lander's power, final operations, and more. The Odysseus lander made contact with the moon on February 22nd. The first time that I am released images, 
it was hard to make out practically any detail if the quality was not very good either from onboard cameras or for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The company was quoted saying, This image illustrates Odysseus landing struck performing its primary task, absorbing first contact with the lunar surface to preserve mission integrity. Meanwhile, the lander's liquid methane and liquid oxygen engine is still throttling, which provided stability. The company believes the two insights from this image enabled Odysseus to gently lean into the lunar surface, preserving the ability to return scientific data, they said. Taking a closer look, you can see one of the six landing legs is broken from impact. This suggests that the lander didn't necessarily just tip over, but had a harder impact than expected. The combination of higher speed, both going down and sideways, was too much for the lander to stay upright and fully intact. Another image highlights the actual tilt to or lean to the lander on the surface. Here, you can see one of its landing legs up in the air with the lander on its side. After successfully transmitting the image to Earth, flight controllers received additional insight into Odysseus' position on the lunar surface, they said. Despite some of the errors that occurred, intuitive machines expressed that they were very happy with how the mission went. In a quote, they pointed out, the IM-1 mission successfully landed the first spacecraft on the moon's South Pole region, marking the United States' first return since Apollo 17 and the first commercial lunar lander to transmit valuable science data of each NASA payload from the moon's first launch. To add to this, the CEO of Intuitive Machines pointed out, we had some very high-level machine objectives to touch down softly on the surface of the moon, softly and safely, and return scientific data to our customers. When Odysseus was originally preparing to land, teams discovered that laser rangefinders on the spacecraft were inoperable, and instead modified software to use lasers on a NASA payload, the navigation Doppler LiDAR. This change was enough to get the lander on the surface, but not at the speeds and exact destination, I am a NASA head originally planned. This likely impacted Odysseus' landing attempt, adding to the sideways movement, and increasing the chances of the lander tipping. Just a few hours ago, the company tweeted saying, Still kicking, Odysseus continues to operate on the lunar surface. At approximately 11 o'clock CST, flight controllers intended downlink additional data and command OD into a configuration that he may phone home if and when he wakes up when the sun rises again. Yesterday on the 28th, NASA and Intuitive Machines held a second press conference to go over what exactly happened. The first was mainly about the state of the lander and how they believed it tipped over. At the time, they didn't know a lot about what payloads would be affected and if the mission would continue on. We know we are degrading in power and we expect that within about 5 hours or so from now is when we will be at a point where we will no longer have commanding or telemetry coming down. As far as the mission lasting around 7 days, they had learned that this was the goal and the plan was not to have the lander last for a very long time. When asked about the chances of surviving the night, they said. The number one limiter we face is the batteries. Batteries are a chemical asset and the chemistry does not respond well to deep cold. So if something happens to the batteries for 14 days of less than 250 degrees, then we won't be able to come back up. And the batteries are absolutely not tested to that level of cold. Neither are flight computers or radios. If we asked our vendors to tell us what the probability was, surviving the deep cold of the moon, they would not put it in writing. Our solar arrays should handle that fine. We're confident that when the sun comes back up over Odysseus, the solar arrays will energize and send power. With all this in mind, we shouldn't expect to hear much from the lander or I am over the next few weeks. Focusing on the payloads, it seems that most of them ended up successfully receiving and transmitting valuable data. They said that they've gotten data from all 12 payloads, both the six commercial and the six NASA experiments. One of the commercial payloads that may have failed is Eagle Camp, an instrument that was designed to deploy from Odysseus about 100 feet or 30 meters above the lunar surface and photographs the craft's touch down from below. Unfortunately, they decided to power down Eagle Camp during landing and not deploy the device because of a necessary software patch related to navigation complications. It was revealed that Eagle Camp was finally deployed early February 28th, landing about 4 meters away. Either in the camera or in the Wi-Fi signal back to the lander, something might not be working correctly. The project team at Ember-Riddle Aeronautical University was working on the issue, although before the launch that project team said Eagle Camp has a battery life of only about 30 minutes, limiting any ability to correct problems. Since the lander touched down on the moon, 
I will be called the lunar noon time, approximately seven Earth days after the lunar sunrise for that lunar day. The lander only had approximately seven remaining Earth days of sunlight left before the next lunar sunset. Accordingly, the Odysseus system has been programmed so that after seven days, once the sun is finally set over the landing site, it will fully and finally shut down. NASA stated their intention to attempt communication with the lander in two to three weeks, provided its batteries and electronics withstand the harsh conditions colder than they were designed for. This scenario is not unprecedented as Japan's slim lander recently re-established contact on February 25th after surviving the lunar night despite not being designed for such conditions. Ultimus expressed optimism stating, Sue Litterer, project scientist for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program or Eclipse, echoed this sentiment saying, The journey of IM-1 is indeed intriguing and unpredictable. Hopefully, the mission will continue operating for as long as possible, paving the way for the eventual return of humans to the moon. There is a chance of it waking up toward the middle of March, but the lander wasn't technically designed to do that. As of right now, there are two more ION missions scheduled to happen later this year and likely in early 2025. Named IM-2 and IM-3, the company is hoping for a fully successful landing and even better results. With the lunar night now beginning, Odysseus is asleep and might not ever wake up. The company will try in a few weeks, but the brutal conditions of the moon could keep it in and out of battery state. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.